In the last video, during my boot of FreeDOS on my system, I had commented on this press F8 prompt, and I mentioned that FreeDOS would just stick there when I was booting. It wouldn't automatically move past it. You know, it should delay for a few seconds and then move on. Uh, but in my case, it wasn't delaying, and I would have to press a key to get past this. I like the space bar, for example, is what I was pressing. And I figured it had something to do with the way FreeDOS was trying to get you know, what time or what amount of time has elapsed and do some type of calculation based on that. And as I looked into the source code for the kernel for FreeDOS, I did find this uh, Git BIOS time. And I found in this code where it's saying press F8, essentially it's constantly calling this Git BIOS time and it's waiting until a certain duration has elapsed. Well, this Git BIOS time is simply doing a peek. It's going out and looking at a memory address, physical address 46C hex, or if you want to look at that as a segment 40 and the offset 6C, that'd be the same thing. But it was constantly reading that, that part of memory, and it was not raising an interrupt. It wasn't moving on. It was just saying sit and keep reading that memory until the value in that memory exceeds a certain value, which would equate to a few seconds or whatever it might be. So I knew that somewhere in my system, I needed to be updating this 46C address with some data of some sort, some type of incremental counter. And so I went over to Stanislavs.org, this website I use all the time. And in there, I tracked down this 406C or 46C and it's a daily timer counter. It's a four byte or a double word. And it says it's equal to zero at midnight. It's incremented by interrupt eight. And it can be read and set by interrupt 1A. And I have a bunch of interrupt 1A stuff supported already, uh, but I don't have interrupt eight. And so tracking that back a little bit further, it seems like, okay, I can do interrupt 1A and I can read the system clock counter, which I support. And every time I read it, I uh, just artificially increment the value of that counter. And that was just kind of a way of cheating through some other stuff I was doing in FreeDOS. I can set it, I can read the real-time clock, set the real-time clock as far as time and date and all that type of stuff. And that support I've got in my BIOS. But it seemed like there should be some way to keep this 406C updated with this interrupt 8. And I do in my code have a spot in memory set aside for this location. It's uh, here, here you can see it's my segment 40 offset 6C daily timer counter. I've given it a name of clock underscore counter and that is a, a double, basically defining a double word there. And that's it within the memory that I have set up in my BIOS for this BIOS data area, which essentially starts at 40 colon 00. Well, normally, as I'm looking into this, it seems like on most Intel-based systems, there would be this 8253 programmable inter interval timer that would essentially be updating that memory location. So there would be an interrupt set up, and this timer would go off every so often. That interrupt then would cause that memory with the timer value to get updated, basically a, a simple counter. I do not have an 8253 in my system. And I don't intend to add one at this point. But what I do have is this VIA, Versatile Interface Adapter. And I'm using that for all my SPI type of code. So anytime I'm writing out to my SPI debugger, I'm reading, writing any of my SD card or any other SPI type of communications, that's all going through a VIA. And if I look at the VIA, this is from my schematic today. And you can see off to the left, there are all of these ports, but there's two ports and each port has eight bits. And I'm using that to essentially manage two separate SPI buses. So one of them can have a MISO MOSI and a, and a serial clock or S clock. And then you can see that I've got this uh, series of chip selects that I can then select different SPI devices. And then I have a second, this PB instead of PA, same thing, it's another independent uh, set of SPI functionality. And that way I can run uh, different devices on different SPI buses if they really uh, aren't super compatible with each other for some reason. And I have run into that with my SD card and some of the other 
things that I've tried to use in the past. But this is already in my system, already connected, as you see here with one exception. I don't have anything connected uh, to IRQB in this PCB that I'm using. So I fixed that. I am going to connect that IRQB now. Uh, now, what I'm going to do though is use that VIA for a reason. It has timer support. And so I can, through code, set it up to run a timer. And when that timer runs, it's going to raise an interrupt at a certain point that I designate in time. And then in that interrupt, I'm going to update that memory address so that as FreeDOS is looking for this incrementing of this clock counter, it is going to be incremented in memory and work correctly. Now, if I go over and I look at my interrupt controller on my system, this PIC master, so this is my priority interrupt controller on the right. And it has, you know, a bunch of different interrupts and I'm using some of those so far. You know, I've got a keyboard, I've got a mouse, but uh, I have a math coprocessor, whatever else I need uh, up to this point. I really haven't needed all of these um, IRQs or actually interrupts that you see here that I can be using. And I don't have a slave, a secondary uh, pick put in my system yet. But what I want to be able to do is go from my VIA on the left here, have it internally do counting, and when it gets to a certain count, I want it then to raise an interrupt through my interrupt controller to my 286. I'm then going to have the 286 update that memory address in my BIOS data area so that FreeDOS sees the correct or approximately correct value that uh, it should be seeing when it checks it. So I went and looked up again on Stanislavs.org and okay, it's interrupt or IRQ zero is interrupt eight and that's supposed to be for this timer. And it should happen about 18 times per second or about every 55 milliseconds that that timer should go off. And when that timer goes off, it should be incrementing that counter that FreeDOS is trying to read out of memory. Uh, now some interesting things here, when I'm using the VIA, it's interrupt. When I have things in code that says raise an interrupt from the VIA, it's an active low. And when I use my pick, it is an active high. So I did have to insert an inverter in between. So I just used a 7414. And I'm essentially running out of the VIA where it's going to raise an interrupt into the inverter, out of the inverter, into IRQ0, which is comparable or equal to, to interrupt 8 on my master pick controller. Here's my VIA, and it's this upper right pin here that is going to be raising the interrupt by dropping it low. And then I have my pick and one of these, I think it's the fourth pin in, I then have to raise high when this goes low. So I put a 7414, uh, I have a small PCB and I just basically extended this. I've updated my schematic so the next time I order a PCB, this of course will be on the board. But for now, I'm just bringing power in here. I'm bringing in the signal from the VIA. I'm inverting it, sending it out to the pick. Um, so not super elegant, but it gets the job done for what I need. Now, when I work with this VIA, uh, what you're going to see is that to, to work with it, you really have a series of these 16 registers, and you can write values to the registers to configure the behavior of the VIA or to write data, read data from the ports. Basically, these are the, these are the different registers that I can work with. And off to the right are all the different I.O. addresses that I have set up to get to the different ports all the way down to this VO1 underscore port A N. Uh, the one, the value after that VO1 timer is a separate variable just to, to store a timer value of FFFF, which you'll see on an upcoming slide. So some of these, let me set up direction, our pins, input, output. I can write out to the ports. I can read in from the ports. I can set up interrupts. I can disable interrupts. I can set up timers and timer values and all of that through these ports that you see here. So what I've done is I wrote this little code that initializes my VIA. So basically it comes in and says, go get that VIA1 timer value, which is FFFF. And then all I do is I write that to 
two of those registers. One is a basically a high counter and one is a low counter. And uh, you can see there that I'm going to write an FF. I'm going to swap my bytes, my, my high and low within AX, and then write it out again to the, to the other. So I write it to the low, I write it to the high counter. All that's really doing is putting FF, FF in my counter. I could probably just simply write in, you know, out via one T, T1C, L, FF, and then do the same thing again uh, with the high. Uh, but this is how I, I did it off of, off of that predefined variable. And then I go in and I write to the ACR. And the ACR, as I get into this, is this auxiliary control register. And in it, I can configure the timer. And that's what I do is I configure it for what's called continuous interrupts on timer one. There's two timers in a VIA. And I'm using one of the timers called T1. I'm disabling the second timer. I'm disabling something called shift register and latching. Uh, and then I write that configuration out to the ACR register. And then I actually enable the timer and write that out as part of this VO1 IER. And the way that works is I'm saying set. So it's a one. I set that. And then I say uh, one here for timer one. So a one, one, and a bunch of zeros says basically turn on timer one. So I gave the timer a value. And the value I gave it is FFFF. And it's going to just decrement. And every time my system clock hits or oscillates, basically, every time it sees that change, it's going to decrement that FFFF. And when it gets down to zero, then it's going to raise an interrupt. Now, that interrupt still happens too fast, though, for what I want. It's faster than 18.2 times per second. And actually on my system right now, I'm running a 22 megahertz bus. And with the 22 megahertz bus and 22 megahertz clock going to the VIA, uh, right now the interrupt, if I have it count in the highest value it can of FFFF down to zero, it happens about 168.7 times per second. And remember, I'm shooting for 18.2. So... The quick math, the closest I'm going to get to that, which is close enough for me, is if I divide it by 9, then I get down to 18.74. I figure that's good enough for what I need. And so every time this interrupt happens, I just simply compare it to 9. Uh, as long as it's under it, I keep on going. I get out. I wait for the interrupt to happen again. I increment. And I keep incrementing this VO1, T1 count. And at some point, I get to 9, so I'm no longer less than 9. And that means I'm going to run this code here. And that should be happening then at this 18.74 times per second approximately. And what I do is I go into this clock counter. And that is the memory location. Clock counter, clock counter plus two that FreeDOS is looking at. It's that location to store the clock counter in the BIOS data area. So when I get to this code here, I'm going to increment that counter. And basically, I'm just adding to the least significant byte, and then I carry, and, and basically, if it, if it does carry, I add that to the, the upper byte. And then I reset this VO1, T1 count, because basically, that's my, uh, I got tracked nine times. So the zero through eight, on the eighth time, it adds plus, well, on the ninth time. So zero through eight is nine times. It would have added, it would be at nine, no longer under nine reset it and then this is basically what's actually going to increment this clock counter that FreeDOS is looking for. So I've put that in place and now I'll show you if I flip over and boot up my system. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my system and I'll let it cold boot and then I'll do it again with a reset because when I cold boot it by the time again my capture device captures it it's already passed it. But you can see the system boots now all the way up to the prompt. Now here I'm going to hit reset so you can see what that reset looks like. And so then it's going through my boot and it waits for a few seconds on the press F8 and then it continues fine. And I do see this bug every once in a while somewhere in my code off to fix that very first character on the REHSD only got written to one of the video frames and I see it every once in a while I'll have to track down the cause of that bug I'll do one more reset and yeah it looks like it persisted
and that time it didn't but that's one of those little bugs I'll, I'll track down later but here you can see though that that timer is working and the delay I get seems reasonable it seems comparable to what I might get on another system uh, that is not my 286 so while I don't have an 8253 programmable interval timer in my system it looks like this versatile interface adapter is going to get the job done for me so minor little enhancement using stuff already on my system but i now have this timer running so that will come in handy i think mm -hmm.